KPM. Let me try target and. Hey, why didn't it move much? Huh. Mr. Q, is, is there something wrong with the board or the chip maybe? No, there's nothing wrong with the board or the chip. What you need is actually this magic powder. Magic ah. powder? Instantly you see the differences. Oh wow, okay. okay. So let's we'll, have a look, yeah? Will this help me to win? Okay, let's so. see how this magic powder works. Ooh, okay, so I think I'm gonna score this one. I just put some I'm on score top this one. This area and this area. Okay. Okay, let's see. Magic powder, are you gonna help me win this game? Okay. And okay, let me try again. And I'm gonna score and target and Oh, okay. Almost there. Almost there, but that's better. <laughs> wow, job. what is this magic powder? What does it do? Hmm, we'll find out later. You are now watching DDA TV KPM and we are in the slot of level 2 and the subject that we're going to learn today is very interesting. It's science DLP for year 6 and my name is Hanif Sean. I think you do play Karim, don't you? Because I just played the game. But we are definitely wondering what was that magic powder about? Huh? You have seen our teacher's profile but before the teacher joined me here today, we also have our sign language interpreter which is teacher Ida. Hello teacher Ida, how are you today? Teacher Ida, did you play carom? Oh, I'm sure you enjoy as well. And of course, with me, uh, the teacher will be teaching today is Mr. Quack. Hello Mr. Quack. Hi, honey. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good as well. And I can call you Mr. Q, right? Yes, you can. Right. Mr. Mr. Q, I'm wondering, um, we play carom and then you put some magic powder and suddenly I'm able to hit the chip further. What, what is going on here? Ah, you see, this magic powder is actually called the talcum powder. Uh so this talcum powder actually reduces the friction between the chip and also the board, therefore, it can move further. It can move further. Very interesting. And of course, Mr. Q, I think before we go deeper in this topic, we do have four pupils joining us online. Hello, everyone. Can you wave at us here? Oh, there they are. They're looking very excited. Can I get your help, Mr. Q, to introduce our pupils? Yeah, sure. On the top left, we have Adam Ferdows from SK Kampung Lindungan. Hi, Adam. Then next, at the bottom, we have Zarik Zakwan. Hi, Zarik. He is also from SK Kampung Lindungan. Okay, and then we have the top right, right corner, we have Alisa Kaisara from SK Kampung Lindungan. And finally, Shiva Anjali from SK UJ 12. Hi, Shiva. Hi. We oh, can get the energy from our four pupils today. And Mr. Q, you were talking about friction. Mm. Is that something that we're going to explore together? Yes, today we are going to talk about frictional force. So frictional force, as you see, hold on, uh, I'll get the slides on. Okay. All right. So what is frictional force? Frictional force is produced when two surfaces are in contact with each other. As you see from the slide, you can see that a crate is actually in contact with the surface. Therefore, frictional force occurs. All right? And then, as you can see here, frictional force is always applied in the opposite direction of the movement of the object. From the slide, you can see here that when the slide, when the crate is actually moving forward, there's actually another force moving backwards, which is also known as the frictional force. Then that is the direction of it. Okay, so Hanif, can yes. you help me with... Uh, the question, uh, this picture on the whiteboard here. Uh -huh. So there's, some, there's a boy who is uh, cycling here, right? Can you use the green arrow to show the direction of the movement? Right, I think he is cycling towards the right side, yeah. that side. So the arrow would go to the right, I guess. Is that awesome. right, Mr. Q? Excellent. 
Okay, so using the red arrow, could you please show everyone at home what is the direction of the frictional force? The red arrow here, so you mentioned that the frictional force is opposing the motion. Yes, it is so opposing the motion. If the green arrow motion is going to the right, then the frictional force should be going the opposite way, which is to the left. Is that right, Mr. Q? Yes, exactly. Thank you, Hanif. To further understand this topic, so I have prepared this uh, small, uh, little, uh, this investigation. Uh. Ah, uh, a little okay. experiment that we're going to have. Yes. I love this. So by using the technology, now we can have this inclinometer. Inclinometer? Which, yes, this inclinometer is actually used to measure the degree of the slope. Okay, so what we have here is we have an eraser and also the sharpener. So this eraser, we, we are going to see which of these two objects uh, fall down first, yeah? Okay, so we have an inclinometer, we have an eraser and a sharpener. Yeah, so uh, Hanif, could you help me to read the readings on the inclinometer when one of the objects starts to fall? Okay, so let me try. Oh, there you go. Oops, hold on, yeah? Okay, okay. so okay. we have the eraser again and the sharpener and I'm going to read the reading on the inclinometer. Okay. Oops, and on. I think right now, okay, we're still flat. Of course, preparing for the investigation. You can try this at home as well, my friends. Okay. And let's bring it down. Oh, there you go. That was at about 15 degrees of inclination, Mr. Q. All right. And the sharpener is already off the board. Okay, now let's us see how much longer does it take for this uh, uh, eraser to actually move down here. Yeah? All right, so that was at 15 degrees. Oh, there you go. That's about 25 degrees. Mm. 25 degrees of inclination and the eraser, whoop, went down. All right. So students online, could you please tell me, put up your hand, raise your hand to sh uh, who wants to answer this here. Can you tell me which object uh, went down first? They raised your their hands hand up. so quick. Raise your hands up. All right. We have okay. Shivanjali. Uh, Shivanjali, which object went down first? It's sharpener okay the reason is because sharpener uh, has less friction uh, therefore it uh, if it slides down faster compared to the others uh, compared to the eraser so it shows here that the eraser has a higher frictional force compared to um, the sharpener hmm. okay moving forward we are let us look at some of the effects of um, frictional force here so there are definitely advantages and disadvantages for it. So let us look at some of the event advantages of frictional force. So as you can see here, rubber can erase the writings on a paper. As you know, everyone at home or uh, at, at school, usually students will use erasers at home uh, to erase their the marking the pencil markings. The writings, right? yes. yeah, that is uh, right. And then brake pads can slow down bicycles and stop their movement. Mm. So as you can see here, I've prepared a bicycle here. So this bicycle, as you move forward, and if you want to stop the bicycle, we are going to press the brake pad, and instantly you'll see, realize that it is not moving at all, okay? Why? Because the brake pad applies, increases the frictional force. Increases the frictional force, therefore it resists the movement of the bicycle moving forward. Next, we have the match, okay? Have you liked the match before? Yes, I have. Uh -huh. So this is actually the match, and when we place this match on top of another surface and we scrub it real hard, it will definitely light the match up. Mm. Why? Because of frictional force. Frictional force, as uh, mentioned earlier, is where it happens when two surfaces are in contact with each other. Right. And my friends at home, when you try this with a match, be careful because there might be fire. So do it with your parents or an older sibling around with you. Right, okay. Mr. Q? Yeah. And then moving forward, we have the sandpaper. Mm. This is a sandpaper. Sandpaper is used to smoothen the rough surface of the wood. So this is a piece of wood. Can you touch this piece of wood? Is it coarse or is it smooth? Oh, this is quite, oh, this is not that smooth though. Yeah. In order to make it smooth, what we can do is we're going to rub it against the sandpaper. Oh, okay. that's interesting. Is it smoother now? Oh, this is much smoother. <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay, and last of all, we have the tread patterns on vehicles. So vehicle tires have tread patterns to prevent us from, uh, to increase the grip uh, on the soil, okay? Uh, and also in the vans, in vans and cars and 
any other vehicles we have uh, trap patterns. Mm, so that, even on the bicycle? Yeah, to avoid uh, accidents uh, or, right. slippery, or slippery roads. Okay, and now we look, let us look at the disadvantages of frictional force. So frictional force can wear out shoe soles. Huh? The worn out shoe soles can cause us to slip easily. For example, here I have, uh, this is slippers I have. Good. So if you can see mm. clearly that the track marks have already uh, faded. Right that. Okay, the track mark has already faded. Therefore, I need to change my slippers soon. Please do, uh -huh. we need to stay safe. All right, and last of all, we have the loud noise. Uh, loud noise is produced when drilling. It is because of uh, the frictional force. Therefore, it is wise, it is, uh, especially when we stay in apartments or condos, we cannot, uh, what do you call, drill during the weekends or you will disturb the neighborhood. Yes, I agree with you, Mr. Q. We have to be considerate to our neighbors and now we're going to take a short break. So much more that we're going to learn today. Do not go anywhere. Stay tuned with us on d TV KPM. with this toy here and hello everyone you are now watching d -Day TV KPM we are in the level 2 slot and together we are learning science DLP year 6 with me is Mr. Quack or I can address him as Mr. Q Mr. Q today we are learning about frictional forces and its effects yes so now what we're going to go through is the factors that affects frictional force so there are all together two factors that affects frictional force the first is the type of surface and mass. Let us do a little uh, this experiment uh, to determine how does the type of surface affects frictional force. So in front of us, uh, I've already prepared this to incline plane with the toy that you were playing just now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a sandpaper. This is a sandpaper, a Can core surface. It? Uh, it is much rougher. And then we have another surface, which, surface which is the paper, which is uh much uh, smoother uh, compared is, to the uh, sandpaper. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to place this toy car right on top of this inclined plane and let it slide it down. Hmm. So I need your help to do to me to read the measurement once once it slides down. All right. Let's okay. see. So let us try it on the smoother surface first. Okay. Let's go. Oh, there you go. So it reaches up to about twenty one here. Okay. Mr. Q. 21 cm, right? 21 cm. Okay, now let us try it on the rougher surface, which is the, uh, the sandpaper, yeah? One, two, go. Oh. oh, that goes only up to about 6 cm. Yes. So the, this paper, it went to 21, and the sandpaper, it went to only 6. Why does that happen, ah, Mr. Q? Because there is more friction on the sandpaper. Okay, hmm. I would like to ask my students online to uh, see whether they can answer this question. Uh -huh. Okay, raise up your hand. Who wants to answer this question? Put up your hand. And... Uh. Okay, we have... Alright, let's just try with... Go with Adam. Okay. Adam. Okay, Adam. Looking at this photo here, this, in this slide, which type of surface has uh, less friction? Is it the rough surface or the smooth surface? Smooth surface. Mm, oh, oh, yes, they want less friction. Yes, it's correct. The wood has uh, less friction because it's smoother. Thank you, Adam. Well done. Well done. Well done, Adam. Okay, moving forward. Uh, now we are just now, like I mentioned earlier, uh, frictional force is affected by two factors, which is the type of surface and now we are going to look at how the mass affects friction. Mm. Okay, so we are going to do a little. Uh, we can alter this experiment a bit here. So we're going to move, put it in the back. Like okay, this. so we tested for type of surface. Now we are testing for mass. Yes. How would mass affect friction? Yes. 
So this is an empty compartment. It's an empty okay. compartment. Okay, this empty compartment. Here. I'm gonna put it here. And then this is an comp a compartment with huh. big, uh, with more stuff inside. Yep, huh. I can see carom chips there. I love yes. to play carom. Yes. Okay. So what does it shows here? It shows that the empty compartment has less mass. Okay. And while the compartment with carom chips here has more mass on it. Okay. So let us see which how uh, how does it affect friction? Yeah. Hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this roller. And slide, let the roller slide it on the, the surface of this uh, the table plane. here. Yes. Okay. So let us uh, try it on the lesser surface, uh, lesser what do you call it? mess. Lesser Less mess. One to go. See what happens. Oh, there you go. Ah. Okay, that traveled quite a distance. Yep. Okay. So it's there. Now let us try it on the the one with bigger mess here. Yeah? Right. Okay. Okay. Here Just in case. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah, didn't even move even much. Move. Yes. Hmm. So from here, we can conclude that a bigger mass will definitely have more friction compared to the uh, to this what do you call empty compartment, empty which compartment. is the last mass. So a bigger mass would have higher friction versus uh, an object with less mass. Yes. So students online. Someone, um, I need some a volunteer here to answer this question. Can you put up your hand? Who's the fastest? Ah. Oh, let's see. I think we have uh, Zarik. Yes. Okay, Zarik. Right. Okay, Zarik. Okay. Looking at the slide here, you have two uh, different boxes here. One is A, one is B. Can you tell me which box? Will, uh, will, in, will have more friction? Box A or box B? B. Very good. Box B will have bigger, um, have more friction. Why is that so, Zarik? Because? Um, because there is no mass apply. There is more mass on it, yeah? Because there is more mass on it. Yes, thank you very much. So therefore, there you have it, the two factors of friction which is the type of surface and the mass. Wow, well done. I think both our pupils answered correctly. Mm. Do you want to give stars to them, Mr. Q? Yes, They're definitely. both brilliant. Yeah, uh, they deserve four stars for the answers that they just provided just now. Oh, that's very, very amazing to each of you. So both of you, each of you actually get four stars. Well done. And I'm sure Mr. Q has so much more to share after this, but we're going to take a short break. Do not go anywhere. Continue with your experiment, but stay tuned with us on Delay TV KPM. everyone you are now watching d -Date tv kpm we are in the level two slot and together we are learning science dlp are you wondering why i'm holding a badminton racket here ah, of course we have our teacher today to answer our questions which is mr q mr quack so we're learning about friction and you will be sharing with us how to increase and how to reduce friction yes exactly do we, hmm, do we use that in sports i wonder now yes we do use that in sports actually so but first of all we are going to how to reduce frictional force first. Okay, the first example here is uh, we can use lubricating oil as shown in the slide here, okay? So the lubricating oil is used to reduce friction on the bicycle chain. So sometimes when you're cycling and you feel that uh, the bicycle is cranky, it doesn't want to mm. move, it's giving you a lot of headache, what you got to do is use this lubricating oil and spray it at the chain. So oh. after you spray at the chain, you can cycle, try to cycle on it, and you realize that it is smoother. Uh, mm. Therefore, it reduces the friction. Oh, interesting. Okay. People at home, if you're doing this, make sure you're angling the spray in the opposite direction, not towards your eyes, not towards your friends. Yes. 
Okay, next we can, we are, uh, the next example is by using talcum powder. So in front of us is a table, uh, it's not a table, it's a board, it's a it, carom board. It's a carom board. Uh, yes. So in order for this uh, carom chips to move smoothly on top of the board, what we got to do is we got to place some of this talcum powder on top of it. Just like oh, that. So uh, we're putting a bit of, spot a bit of powder yes. there. Yes. Okay. And so Hanif, yes. could you try? Slide okay. it. And let's see if I can target this uh, better. Okay. Right, let's see. see whether it's smoother. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, there. I almost caught Mr. Q. Okay. Almost there. After this, you can play some more, right? Alright. Okay. Thirdly, we can use wheels. Wheels can be used to reduce friction. Okay, the wheels not doesn't mean doesn't necessarily mean that we are using a bicycle. Uh, okay, like for example, the the crates, the boxes in front of us here. Mm -hmm. can, can you try to help to push it towards the bicycle? Push these three it, boxes is here. Is possible? Okay, let me try. So this is from the floor. Hmm, it's, oh, I think I'm the one moving, Mr. Q. <laughs> no, the boxes are not moving. It's too heavy. Okay, why hmm. not we ask the opinion of one of our students here? All right. Hmm, let us see. Hmm, who wants to answer this question? Okay, we have Alisa. Okay, Alisa, could you help out uh, Abang Hanif here? Uh, Hanif here, is it, uh, is it easier for him to push the box forward or to use the trolley? What do you think? Hmm. Abang Hanif, you can put up the boxes into up in the trolley. So I'm supposed to put the boxes on the trolley? Yes, that's oh. what she's suggesting. Right. Hmm. Would that be easier? Should I try Mr. Q? Why not? Okay, let me try with this first box. Careful when you leave heavy things and put it down. Oh, there you go. Okay, Okay, so I'm going to try and push it closer to the bicycle. Oh, there you go. Wow, <laughs> this is so much easier, Mr. Q. What a lifesaver, right? Yeah, a lifesaver. I could <laughs> bring it forward. I could also reverse back. Very easy. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. Now, just now you, I uh, remembered that you were talking about Badminton, right? Badminton, uh, my yes. favorite sport. So during the sports of badminton, we can we must increase friction instead of reducing it. So how do we do that? So from the slide here, it's shown that uh, we have this uh, what do you call? This is a tennis racket. Hmm. So as you know, tennis racket requires a lot of power hitting in the tennis ball, right? Mm -hmm. So if your hands are sweaty, palms are sweaty, so do you think the racket will fly off? There's a possibility. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. Yes, so definitely uh, it will happen. So what to help to prevent such uh, incidents from happening, we got to wrap it up with a grip. Uh, just like this badminton racket here. This is a brand new badminton racket. It's not, uh, it's not installed with the grip yet. Mm. So later on we can install it. Huh? Oh, which is why sometimes I notice at badminton rackets, there's a bit of, it's very furry. Yeah, if I can yeah, yeah. see that, yes. to give you better grip. Yes, definitely. And uh, moving to the next example, we have the brush. As you, see, as you can see from the slide, the brush is um, slightly rough on the surface. Right? It is important to have such surfaces so that they can scrub away the dirty stains on the floor. Mm, mm. That is very important. The same, uh, the same goes to while, using, while washing dishes. So I'm a professional in helping out at home. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the uh, uh, this is a dishwashing sponge with, with a rough surface. So usually I'll use this uh, to to scrub the surface of the pan, which is uh, stained with oil and all that. So to make sure that the pots are clean, mm, mm. squeaky clean, yes. and you'll be all shiny after. That's very interesting. And of course, yes. Mr. Q, I, I think would like to ask one of our students a question. Of course. Okay. Let's test them. So, can one of you, one of you here, let me know how to increase uh, frictional force or reduce frictional force in our daily life? Who wants to answer? Put up your hand. Ah, looks like we have one volunteer here. Okay, Shivanjali, could you please show us what have you prepared for us? Hi. I am Simanjali. Today, I am going to explain about fictional force for ice skating as in the picture above. 
We can't use normal shoes to do ice skating. We may easily slip and fall and cause us injuries. Those who ice skate need to have blades on the shoes to increase the friction to stick on the ice. So this is safer way to use skate, especially for athletes. Thank you. Wow. Wow. What a unique example. I like yes. that. Yes. And it's, uh, she explained it. She explained it extremely well. Yes. Uh -huh. So this is definitely a way why, uh, uh, why this uh, what do you call the uh, the shoes of the ice skating have blades. Oh, very interesting. So because of friction, we could have all those beautiful formation when we ice skate. And well done. And Mr. Q, hmm. can we get a summary of what we have learned together today? Okay. So basically, what we have learned today is about frictional frictional force. We have learned about the effects of it, the advantages and the disadvantages of frictional force, the factors of frictional force, and how to increase and how to reduce frictional force. Oh, I think and I'm sure our students are amazing in answering the questions of Mr. Q. What do you think of their overall performance for all of them? Okay, based on their performance today, I would like to give them five stars because they managed to explain it thoroughly and how to apply frictional force in their daily life. Brilliant. So all of you get five stars. I'm sure my friends at home, you get five stars as well. But we are greedy for stars and marks. We want to get more, right? Mr. Q, we want to study harder. Where do you think we can find more information or even resources? Ah, you can get it from Portal Delima. Portal Delima, that's right. And with that, we have finished. We have, uh, we have come to the end of our show. So thank you so much, Mr. Quack or Mr. Yes. Q, for the lesson that we have learned today. And of course, thank you as well to our sign language interview which is teacher Ida. Thank you so much. And to our four pupils, you all have been amazing. You are Elisa, Adam, Zarik, as well as Shiva. Beautiful, beautiful. Well done to all of you. And to my friends at home, thank you for joining us. I'm sure you have learned a lot, but continue learning. My name is Hanif Sean and hope to see you again on Direct TV KPM. Bye, guys.